Greetings to entire world. This is Sunday evening, 8 p.m. Indian time, and ICSI is with yet another webinar on NRIs for Indian Education and Skills. And these, we in all the weeks, past weeks, we are talking uh, with our experts from Canada. Um, CA Surya Vijay Shastri Kotamarti, sir, CEO of Kotamarti Group, and Mr. Vijay Vikas Malhotra, I'm sorry, Vikas Malhotra, tourism expert from Canada. Both the experts, both the uh, persons, they are talking with us on how to help the people from India to uh, give their services abroad, to migrate to Canada, and whatnot. So the, this particular series that we have started, this particular webinar series is all about giving you the knowledge related to service industry, uh, services export across the globe. And um, in that series today, we will be talking on export in consultancy services. Before I bring my honorable guest for the evening in front of every one of you, those who are watching us on YouTube live, I would like to show you a few slides to begin with. And then we straight away go to Mr. Vikas Malhotraji and talk to him about exports in consultancy services and gain in-depth knowledge onto this. This is our webinar number 1749. Keep watching. So to begin with, today is a very wonderful day, International UNICEF Day. And what is UNICEF? We all know we have started uh, from the childhood in the school and in the GK books and everywhere. So UNICEF is United Nations International Children Emergency Fund. And this day is dedicated to children, specifically when started for the World War, uh, affected children, but now uh, throughout uh, the world, throughout the, the disciplines, throughout the areas, this particular organization is working for the benefit of children. This year, particular theme is dedicated to girl child and heads off to the organization, the work that they are doing for the benefit of children all across the globe. Apart from this, today is also World Mountain Day. So mountains are the symbol of strength, dedication, determination, and we have to learn that. And heads off to the people, those who have uh, gone over the mountains, top of the mountains, have conquered them and have taken some glorious uh, strength to themselves and to their respective countries. And also with this, I would like to say ICSI has dedicatedly devoted its services. ICSI is the service industry and the strategic and facilitator to help everyone, to bring everyone, to give platform to everyone where they can gain knowledge and they can gain strength and they can do something best to contribute towards society, whether it is related to any particular service industry portion or to the startups or to the entrepreneurship or any venture related to service industry and services export. So with this, without wasting any time, uh, I just stopped share my slide and I want to bring in front of every one of you. I welcome on behalf of all the viewers, those who are watching us, a uh, very uh, good evening in India and good morning to Sri Vikas Malhotra ji, <coughs> straight away from Canada. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you uh, once again for having me over here. Uh, today's uh, topic is uh, something which everybody, you know, would love to know, especially those who are actually planning to go out. And it's just not about going out. Uh, to consult is to ask, to consult is to take the opinion, to consult is to enhance your knowledge about something which we would not be knowing. And that can be anything. You can consult to 
cook food you can can you can like you know in sports so let's just focus on to consult how to go out so before that i would just like to say that normally what happens is if anybody would like to migrate as a student let's talk about north america for some time people actually have lots of questions in their mind so what do they do they go online these days when i'm i mean when we had to come there was not much of search engines around the world but these days everybody would go online type in how to go abroad how to do this how to do that they will get a skeleton kind of the info which is very good to do as a homework but those of us, those of the audiences who were here last week, I had mentioned over there that when they want to come uh, abroad, they have to do, they must do a preparation in their mind. They must draw down a list of the things that they would like to, you know, achieve and they should set a goal for themselves. So one of the things I would like to say is to consult. Normally, if somebody wants to come abroad, the best answer would be to consult a professional. Now, when I say professional, it really depends upon how would you like to come. If you're coming as a PR, which is a permanent residency, if you're going to come as a student, or if you're going to come as a work. So all those are the steps, the ladders to get to the top, which is the citizenship. That's the final goal for anybody to settle down abroad. and. Canada is definitely one of the places which awards citizenship as far as we have met uh, the platform of the, you know, the number of days over here and we have no criminal record against us. All of those things count. But, but at the end of the day, the goal is to attain the citizenship. I want to touch down to students specifically. Uh, I would like to say 99 out of 100 students come here abroad to settle down here eventually. So I've hardly seen, and I'm trying to think, I've hardly seen anybody coming here as a student and going back to India or wherever they come back, you know, they come from in the world. But what are the steps? What do they need to do? What are the legalities? What are the, what are the laws? What are the regulations? What can we expect when we migrate or when we go to another place in the world? As an example, uh, uh, you know, it is snowing outside right now as we speak. So, I mean, the extreme weather can also be one of the most important part. Any, I mean, like for the awareness, everybody should be aware of that before they come. So their mind is prepared. If you're going to a certain place, we will be facing all of these uh, conditions as well. But how does all this happen? There has to be somebody... I'm not talking about search engines, I'm talking about a professional. There has to be somebody who can impart the knowledge that they have, and that is to consult. So my suggestion would be that anybody wants to go to any part of the world, consult a pro professional. Some of the times you have to hire a professional as well. Uh, depends on what category on the stream that you want to come. Uh, and I know that in India, there are lots of uh, consultants always available. Uh, some of them are specializing in uh, to residents, some of them are for students, but they can be found almost every part of India. So this is my this is my get go sentence that for sure, please don't assume that, oh, I can do it all by myself. Yes, you can. I'm not saying that you cannot, but it's going to cost you a lot of time. It's going to cost you uh, at least double or triple the time that you would just go to a consultant and say, hey, I would like to go as a PR or as a student. What are the things, you know, what are the tests you need to do? What are the qualifications you need to have? What is the system of the points that you need to get? All of those things are very, very crucial for anybody to know. And that would be my step number one. Now, working on those, once when you are aware these are the 20 things you need to do. Working on those comes as step number two. Now, how will you work on something which you don't even know? You may know 19, you may miss one. So, I mean, we are speaking about the rest of your life. So it's not advisable to take your own decisions in certain things. And for that, I would say that to consult 
to export abroad, to come abroad is very, very uh, crucial step and should be the step number one, I would say. Right. Uh, uh, I will also take a few questions, but before that, I, as an introductory note, I would like that uh, Sri uh, Vijay Shastri Kotamati, sir, also say a few words onto this, onto consultancy services. Then I'll ask a few questions as well. So your remarks onto this, introductory remarks. Uh, so you are on mute. If you can just unmute yourself. Um, so your mic is, on, uh, yes. Uh, your, your voice is not very clear. Yes, it is. Um, whether it is consultancy service or it is any service for that matter, like because he's saying, you know, you have to make sure that you always get the uh, professional advice on in the areas that you are intending to come over to Canada. Now, as a student, if you are coming anyway, you know, you will uh, certainly uh, have your goal set and you'll think uh, once I go to Canada, you know, depending on my <clears throat> education for which I'm going and thereafter, I'll think about settling down. So I'll find out more when I'm there, which is okay, you know, that's fine. You know, come here, first of all, understand the um, various things, like, uh, because you said the most important thing to understand anyone, whether they are coming for consultancy service or for their any matter, anything, you have to understand the weather first. You know, but, uh, right now um, it's uh, snowing since uh, early morning and it's uh, the roads are pretty bad. Even if we are driving, you have to be very, very careful when you drive. So um, in addition to that, you know, you also have to uh, keep an eye on uh, uh, the people who are uh, walking on the roads. There are many things which you have to uh, know about the snow, irrespective of which uh, profession you are coming for or which category of uh, uh, PR you are coming for. So it is important that you understand Canada as such. You know, it doesn't matter in which areas, but uh, the weather, the type, uh, the people who live here, the way they live. These are some of the initial things that everyone has to understand. We'll, sp we'll speak more uh, specific about each consultancy area as we go forward. But those be, would be my comments that uh, certainly keep an open mind and uh, learn about uh, the country more even before you land here. It doesn't matter whether you land as a student or as a PR or as any other under even under work permitted in any category. You have to understand the country where you are going before you even come. Okay, right, sir. Thank you. So uh, the question arises here, if somebody like uh, as in a uh, very start, uh, starting uh, in this particular field or want to uh, go for consultancy services, is there any specific uh, kind of a degree or a kind of an education that is needed or is there uh, which he or she should do before becoming a consultant? agent or something like that or any uh, one having uh, knowledge about a particular field can do this particular thing see uh, let me answer that um, it all depends on uh, which field you are coming to first of all and uh, what we have outside canada really mm -hmm. does not uh, matter when you come to canada they mm -hmm. would like you to get accredited with local uh, designations or local diplomas or something which gives you the local uh, platform which makes you understand about what you have here so you might be having the best of the best uh, qualifications from uh, india canada or anywhere in the world that you are coming to this country but you will have to update your uh, qualifications and uh, other um, uh, educational uh, requirements depending upon what you come so thinking that i will be able to do everything and uh, come pre fully prepared with the 
designations will not work. For instance, nurses might have their uh, nursing qualifications in India, but uh, when they come, you know, obviously they will require some training here because they are on demand. Maybe they can come on work permit, but still they will have to have some sort of an understanding at how, how the healthcare system works here. Same is the case for any other profession. Okay. Same is for becoming a consultant as well. Any, yeah, consultant is a very broad word. Now, consultant mm -hmm. in what? You know, you can be a consultant in uh, uh, arch uh, architecture or you can be a consultant for, um, you know, uh, as an accountant or a yeah, consultant for financial services. You can, consultancy is a very broad word. So it, uh, I had mentioned uh, last year, uh, week also, and even Vikasji has said that we will speak uh, sector-wise about the consultancy because uh, it is specific to that specific uh, um, uh, sector that we are we are talking about. So yes, generally, um, if you just want a broad answer, the broad answer is in whatever field you want to come and uh, give the uh, ser consultancy services, you will have to definitely have something local in order for you to understand the local laws and the local things the way they work. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, so your inputs on to that, um, Mr. Vikas Palutraji? So, <clears throat> so one of the things is, if you want to come as a consultant in whatever field, are you coming as a business visa? Are you going to come as an investor? That is a very, that opens a very, very big field. If I understood the question, uh, like in the right way, mm -hmm. uh, somebody wants to come to Canada as a consultant, meaning to say, as a consultant to immigrate others from other parts of the world into here. Is that right? Is that what I'm understanding? Uh, like when we talk about the services export in terms of consultancy, that uh, need not to come physically to the place. They can give their services from here also online, like there are different modes. So uh, probably who can come into this particular Kind of oh, that that is a different question altogether. You know, you yes. are. Uh, That's you exactly are... what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so anybody sitting in any part of the world can become a consultant, provided you are ex, you have an expertise into that area. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say that somebody is in India and want to become a consultant. Mm -hmm. I really don't know what are the rules and regulations within India, but I know that there are some. Uh, companies who have actually started these services. And I don't personally think there is any qualification required. What is required is a lawyer's association from that country's, uh, you know, like place, like as an example, if somebody's in India and wants to be a consultant to immigrate okay. everybody here, yes. then they would need a tie up in Canada with a lawyer who's actually engaged into these services as well. Right. Otherwise, how are you going to exchange the documentations? How are you going to process everything over there? Um, and just to touch down, there is something called as ICAS, I-C-A-S. ICAS is required by a Canadian lawyer who's authorized mm -hmm. to endorse the qualifications of any personnel to come over here. ICAS mm -hmm. is not always required. Only if the immigration officer in your interview is going to ask you, only then you will need that certification. So... Mm -hmm. And that cannot be obtained from anywhere else except for the place that you're actually going, which is going to be Canada in this specific case. So mm -hmm. to answer to the question, yes, the export services can be delivered, can be rendered from any part of the world, provided mm -hmm. you have some kind of a tie up with an authorized personnel or a company in the place that you're going to go to. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, also, you mentioned in the very beginning that uh, um, um, to find a consultant, uh, suppose we want to come, students want to come to Canada for studies or for other things. So they have to consult some immigration agent or consultancy agents. So uh, um, what is your opinion? Like people want to trust such kind of a consultant or straight away want to go to embassies or the consulates to get the first-hand <clears throat> knowledge. Will that be safe or uh, that the consultancy services is equally safer? Uh, what is your view on to that? 
I really, really appreciate this question and I hear it all the time. So that is wonderful. Thumbs up to that. And this is something which anybody's mind would also go. Should I trust? Should I not trust? Should I do? Should I not do? So there are three things I again want to say. I don't know why at every week I say three things. Like last week I said three S, but it just comes down to the top three. There would be many more. So the first thing is, please do your own homework. Please, wherever you go, do your own homework. There are lots of search engines open. There are lots of, uh, uh, there are there is a lot of info that you can get online. Uh, I do want to touch down to the embassies. It is, it is, it is a very lengthier, tedious process and takes a lot of energy to go to the embassies. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's not about the lineups. It's not about the waiting time. It is about the documentations. Let's say that you're going to migrate as a permanent residence in Canada. You'll go to the Canadian embassy. They will say, okay, here is a checklist. This is what you need to do. And you got to be super accurate in those. I remember when long, many, many, many years ago, one of my nephews was applying for Canadian uh, PR, excuse me. There was a, not even a two or three mm size of his photograph, which went more than what they accepted. It was rejected. He had to go back all the way. And then he had to redo the whole thing again. So if you meet, a professional consultant, he or she is going to let you know, sorry, this is not accepted by them. I need to be accurate. You're actually going to throw away your responsibility to somebody by paying a fees. Of course, it comes with a fees. I'm not saying it's free. Now comes the point of trust. Chitra, I would like to say trust is a very, very broad term. We got to do our own homework. If you have a contradiction in let's say that the consultant is saying, oh, you are supposed to produce these five things to us and then only we can start. But if you've done your homework, you can always say, why don't you start my file? There we get 180 days to do all these five things. Why would I lose six months just to bring you all those documents, at least put my file? Because you've done your homework, you know that. So you can always counter upon that. And then the consultant will definitely say, yes, he or she's right. One more thing. Mm -hmm. always always sign an agreement do not just give your money your trust your uh, important aspect of your life a file of your life i would say in somebody's hands without having a written and a professional agreement between the two parties involved which is you and them there is one particular consultant i know i actually happen to know their uh, family over here in brampton where i live so they basically uh, have a book. If anybody signs them up, they actually make them sign that you understand these are the clauses. You understand these are the amounts that you will need to bring. Your, your bank account, your financial standings, your qualifications, your degree. The person gets from them 14 days to read everything. They take the book home, wherever they go. Then they come, if they're happy, then only they go back and they sign up for that. There is a 75 or 100 rupees fees also that they have to pay for that book because otherwise everybody will take all these books. But they adjust that in their consultant NCP. So that's what the trust factor comes into. We got to do our own homework. And allow me to say, it is not only about the export services. Trust is every single place. You, you're joining, a, you're, you're going to join an organization to work. What are you going to do? You are going to put some kind of element of trust in your brain. You know what? This is the right place for me to work. You're taking admission in a university. You're going to put some kind of trust in the consultant who's going to say, hey, why don't you join Stanford? Why don't you join Seneca? Why don't you join this? But what do you do? You hear these names, you go back, you put yourself on like, you know, in front of a search engine and you say, yeah, look at the ratings. This is wonderful. So we got to build our trust. You cannot have 100% trust in the get-go. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you so much for this. I think too much uh, of a lecture on, on trust. No, 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 no. <laughs> so uh, you, uh, everything is like making, you are making clear uh, things to us. Thank you. Um, uh, as Kutamarti sir uh, uh, 
talked uh, about this sector specific consultancy services i would like to ask sir uh, to guide us something uh, about the financial uh, yeah financial consultancy services if some the, this particular sector is uh, what uh, is the scope as far as consultancy services in this particular segment is concerned and what uh, uh, needs to be done, how to go by, and what is the scope. So, sir, something on financial consultancy services? Sure. Um, thanks for asking that. Again, I would say that uh, I'll break it into two. One is, you know, if you are coming to Canada and if you are uh, intending to serve uh, Canada from uh, India, like because you have said, if you want to do the financial service, now financial service itself is again a very wide uh, um, subject. It includes, um, you know, services relating to various uh, um, financial activity. Here in Canada, there are uh, financial advisors who advise on uh, um, various uh, things such as RRSPs, RESPs and all that, which I don't think anyone uh, who's from India can um, do that. So probably that particular financial sector, the advice they may not be giving, uh, able to give from India. When they come here, obviously, there are courses uh, uh, from the uh, Canadian Institute. There is an ICSI uh, course for about two or three weeks. You have to pass that. And then if you are going to uh, into insurance, then uh, life insurance, there are separate uh, courses that you have to uh, pass. So all that will be if you are coming here and doing it. So that is, again, linked to immigration and all that. But uh, I will uh, talk specifically for people who want to serve from India. The, in the financial sector, one of them being accounting, um, there is scope for that. But then again, there is a matter of trust and uh, the knowledge of the people who want to serve, their uh, ability to, uh, to understand the accounting uh, systems and the softwares that are involved in that. So if they have access to that and if they have personnel trained in India, then probably, you know, that is called, which is a part of the BPO and many organizations are doing it at a very big level. And there are some who are also doing it at the small level as far as accounting is concerned. So I will uh, say that if someone is interested in giving um, services uh, from India relating to accounting, so they can uh, have uh, themselves acquainted with uh, um, some of the software accounting softwares which uh, are uh, used by the small and medium inter enterprises such as sage uh, that is called simply accounting and then quickbooks and there are a couple of other things so if you are thinking of uh, serving the uh, giving consultancy in the accounting area where you can do the bookkeeping because you know you, you can't advise again as a chart accountant from india the people who are in canada about the the uh, aspects of the income tax and other things, because then, you know, you are again crossing uh, the um, um, borders for which you are supposed to give your uh, consultancy. So you have to meet the local laws while you are uh, uh, giving those type of services. So if you are intending to do the bookkeeping, yes, you can uh, use the software. You can have people work there in India. It's a very convenient way of doing it many people are doing it and if you need any assistance anybody needs help in those regards i can tell similarly there are some areas which can be done from india and which are being done like um, uh, in the healthcare industry, you know, there uh, I have seen doctors uh, again narrating their uh, um, uh, requirement and it's noted down and voice uh, recording is done. And then that is uh, again interpreted by the people staying way back in India. They hear it and um, it is done through uh, data transfers and they again uh, put back the translation what whatever the doctor has said, and then it is uh, looked at it here and uh, the uh, data uh, information is passed on to others. So there are various areas in which uh, uh, the um, thing is going. So uh, I would suggest, uh, Chitra, that you should, uh, you know, we should break uh, up everything into correct sectors 
the health care the financial sector uh, the uh, legal and uh, uh, legal counseling uh, area so um, you know i would suggest that we we, um, we first come out uh, between us you know we can always offline uh, discuss what are the various uh, areas of consultancy in which we should speak about and yes. then uh, we can speak specific to that uh one uh, not necessarily one if we are able to cover more than uh, two or three like travel industry is another um, there can be travel consultancy but then there might be restrictions again related to that so there are various sectors which you know if you um, we agree then we can have those uh, specified and then we can tell the listeners that today we are uh, you know talk, going to talk about these two sectors specific to that prior to the uh, um webinar itself we we are able to tell them then their interest and they can be specific in what they ask that's my personal opinion but this is what you know when someone wants to give the um, consultancy from india in these areas that i have spoken they can still do it from india and uh, there are many people who are doing it and they they can easily do it so the people should look forward because we have got a number of uh, chartered accountants in india we have got number of company secretaries cost accountants and there are many other professions also which they can look at and and do it ji 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 thank you for the suggestion sir we will we'll definitely do accordingly and as today in the consultancy part of this particular webinar we'll 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 carry forward this also today we will be more likely to talk about the financial consultancy services with your expertise and the to travel and tourism uh, consultancy services with the expertise of vikas sir uh, uh, to to uh, to pass on my further question to vikas malhotra sir before that i would like to ask a, a question uh, to uh, kota marti sir so particularly talking about the young generation those who are uh, doing their uh, studies in finance uh, financial or economics particularly or uh, what scope you want to tell them in this particular field in in finance and in consultancy and in particularly when they are looking uh, towards abroad to make their career so how they should go about see um many students are coming here to canada mm -hmm. they uh, they just take some courses in order for them to uh, get uh, the uh, um extension of their uh, uh, student permit to uh, you know uh, open work permit and then eventually they graduate uh, means they get their uh, pr and they continue so if you plan yourself initially itself you know the type of courses that you do keeping in mind that you can have that as your career path and uh, from the beginning itself from the time you are coming in as a student if you make uh, there are areas like payroll which is a very vast area and uh, uh, there are payroll courses and these are uh, courses which are not very uh, uh, you know broad or takes a long time they can be done simultaneously while you, uh, these students or these uh, people who are coming on the student permit can pursue and uh, by the time they complete that if they pursue in, in the payroll because there is uh, an association called the canadian payroll association so let's say they, somebody is interested in going into hr and they want to get into this this is a very big area and there is a huge demand for payroll uh, processing because um, a large number of companies have outsourced their payroll to um, big companies like adp sarid and then there are many more uh, payroll processing companies so if uh, uh, you are coming because most of the students who are coming here even though they call the graduate certificate they do diplomas here and uh, if they are pursuing let them uh, focus in addition to whatever they are doing into specific things such as uh, like i just gave an example of payroll but there are uh, if you are having interest in uh, uh, nursing i have seen some people 
people who uh, come from that background from India, uh, they are uh, in the pharmacy or they are in the medical uh, area, they come, they uh, get in uh, the, um, uh, they give the services relating to going and giving uh, injection, getting the their blood and uh, passing it on. Uh, they become the actual agents of the organizations who um, receive these uh, e ECGs and um, blood collection, everything through these uh, people who, so th there are courses for each one of them. So you have to see which area you would like to go and depending on how you already have your experience in India, based on that, you know, choose the right uh, um, uh, degree or diploma or whatever you are coming to, pursue the right thing, do that for the purpose of uh, settling here in from the in immigration side but at the same time simultaneously if you are able to also pursue these additional courses you would have been fully set by the time you complete your uh, uh, student uh, visa and you are on the uh, uh, open work permit for the next two or three years whatever you get thank you sir point well taken uh, moving on to uh, mr vikas malhotra sir so, uh, sir, uh, please guide us uh, mm -hmm. more about uh, travel and tourism consultancy services. Sure. So, as uh, Vijay sir has also said about that, you need to enhance your skills by taking up a course or, you know, in the respective field. So, travel and tourism industry is a huge, it's a vast, it's a vast area. You're placing yourself in an ocean and you're right on the shore to explore the ocean. Now, would you like to go west, east, north? We don't know. So how do we did how do we do the entry point? So there is a requirement by every province, where are you going to operate from? I'm going to talk specifically about our province, which is on Ontario. Mm -hmm. There is a government regulation that anybody needs to interact in this industry needs to pass a, uh, a I would not call a test. It's an exam. And that is called TICO, T-I-C-O. T is for travel, I is for industry, C is for council, and O is the province where you are from, which is on Ontario over here. Excuse me. Now, it's basically a rules and regulations kind of a thing that you do. Then it will, it will give you a certification that you are allowed to interact with the consumers who are going to buy any component of the same industry. For example, somebody wants to purchase some flights, somebody wants to work in this field, somebody wants to interact. So it is going to give you the both sides, the consumer aspect, as well as the professional aspect. And it will, and it lays down the rules and the regulations. So that is one of the government's requirements that everybody would like, will be required to do. I request everybody to go on to the website. It's called tico.ca, so T-I-C-O dot C-A. That website is actually going to define everything that I, that, you know, that I want to speak. So that's really your entry point. Once when you're there, then your other enhanced certifications, and I'm, and I'm proudly going to say that ICSCI, uh, which is our forum, which we're going to speak, speak from, uh, <clears throat> has the, uh, you know, when I was a student of ITFT, I was actually associated and we did that course and it is called as the IATA course, I-A-T-A. Right. Those who wants to get into the industry, IATA course is very, very important to do. If you do it, it is not like it's mandatory, but if you do it, you're already placing above lots of other candidates out there. So doing that IATA course, now IATA has courses of various kinds. They've got more than 300. But the most important course is the ticketing <clears throat> course. Right. The ticketing course, act, and you can do that from any part of the world. You don't need to come to a particular place to do that course because most of it is online and then you appear in an examination into your closest center, uh, which has opened up now after the pandemic situation as well. So once when you qualify for that, you get the certifications, you, you are very well versed with the technical aspect of the civil aviation, of the ticketing, of the airline re regulations as well. So those would be my entry points and you could do them at your ease. There's no deadline. The earlier you do it, better it is. 
but those will already keep you on a higher pedestal as compared to the other. So when you migrate and you want to find up a job, they all the companies are going to ask you, are you TECO certified? Have you done your IATA course? Those are really the two things that I would like to say, which you can do sitting in India as well. Mm -hmm. There is one more thing I want. There are actually two more things which I want to say. One is once when you do these two, now your mind will go, what, what's next? What is my next step, which I'm going to do? So you can still file in your uh, student file or PR file and you arrive over here. Then you need to keep yourself enhanced. There, there are courses of specifications like tour operators, as an example. ICAO, which is International Civil Aviation Organization. IATA also has various streams of those. Those are secondary, but you keep on doing those things. It will always enhance the knowledge that you will have. I still deliver lectures and for me to deliver them, I still actually study myself because if you don't enhance yourself in the particular industry, you know what? You are just shooting in the dark you're just going to assume a lot of things which are not, which, which may or may not be right. Mm -hmm. Last thing I really want to come back, if you allow me to, apart from that, I want to go back to the questions, uh, the topic that we were speaking about, you know, to consult, to hire a consultant and then to come. There was one afterthought, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm bringing everybody back onto those thoughts, but That's it's very, very important to know, you always should work on a formula called A plus five. Always, always when you do that, irrespective of what uh, stream of life you're going to migrate. If you're coming as a student to settle down, whatever is the case, A is for arrival, plus five is five years. When you go to a professional consultant or when you do your own homework, do not just keep yourself till the mindset, I just want to reach there. Okay, you place yourself, you reach there. What do you find yourself in the next five years after your arrival? That is A plus five. Okay, where am I placed? What am I going to do in my first five years of my life? We are speaking about a lifespan of maybe I would say, God bless everybody. I would say 50 years, right? Or 60 years. We are speaking about a span of 50 to 60 years of life. We are only going to give five years of us to settle down. How are we going to do that? We should always work on a formula of A plus five in the sense that I have arrived. I'm assuming that I've arrived over there. I'm at the airport. I'm with my back. What am I going to do from that day of arrival in the next five years? Am I going to settle down? Uh, how are the living expenses? How are the, the real estate? Am I going to pay a rent? Am I going to do a part-time job? Am I going to uh, spend 20 hours a week working and students are allowed to work legally over here. Uh, what are my insurance benefits? What are the facilities? What are the government regulations? Those A plus five is going to be a mixed bag in your mind. But if you're working with a goal in your mind that if I'm going to land in 2023, by 2028, I should be absolutely well settled uh, person and then I will conduct the rest of my life with the process of life whatever your routine of life but if but don't give yourself more than five years I'm saying five people here settle down in a year and a half also I'm just giving five to uh, you know to motivate everybody that five is a good enough time for you to settle on so and I'm sorry I wanted to touch this point in the earlier all uh, earlier segment I would say but it was just an afterthought yeah Thank you, sir. Um, a question arises. Uh, uh, I've seen that there are certain online courses also related to countries, like uh, some online websites, they do uh, country-specific certifications in tourism, uh, which anybody can do. And even travel agents, uh, whosoever is coming to their travel agency to work with them, they want that they should be Australia expert, they should be Canada expert, they should be Swiss expert. There's a lot many certificates. How much such kind of a courses or certification program will help them to become travel and tourism consultant, not only for the Indian tourists to go abroad, but also for the foreign tourists? Sure. So 
those are called secondary courses. They are not the mainstream ones. They are destination specific. Mm -hmm. um, you can really do them any point of time, even when you arrive over here, you can even do them or you can do them, but uh, you know, like sitting from India, but country that is basically enhancing your knowledge about a certain, about a specific place. You just named Australia as an example. So if you're an Aussie specialist course, um, you would definitely be expected to be an Aussie specialist if you have done that course, obviously. But does that course lead you to a career path? I would say yes, but not more than 5 to 7%. What's okay. more important is to know the fundamentals and then get into the specifics after that. Right, right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kota Marti, sir, I would like to ask that is uh, such kind of an online courses are also there for financial consultancy services available for uh... the um, payroll and other things that I was mentioning, you know, these are available, you can uh, complete that uh, and uh, be ready, there's no problem. But uh, um, for instance, if you want to know about the Canadian income taxes, yes, there are online courses, which uh, some of the uh, colleges and universities offer, you can do all these courses and uh, acquaint yourself uh, in order for you to uh, be competent enough to give for even those who are leaving India, just like in the travel industry, you can uh, acquaint yourself uh, with the requirements of TICO or, or other uh, organizations that relate to travel. You can also find out uh, the online courses relevant to uh, these uh, particular um, areas where you would like to uh, give the uh, consultancy. Uh, you can do that if you are coming here and going to pursue your career. And if you are uh, intending to provide those services, like you can do, do a subcontracting with some companies uh, who offer the payroll services. And uh, you can say that uh, we, we have learned this is the certification that we have done for uh, acquainting ourselves with the payroll processes in, in, in Canada. And uh, we can uh, provide that. We have the QuickBooks service here. We will be able to generate this. So there may be large, medium and large size companies who, who would say, okay, you know, at least the processing of the pay stubs and other things you can do and uh, transfer of the money through direct deposits and all they can either do themselves or they can uh, do it through uh, another uh, service provider so the areas in which uh, the consultancy can be given are wide and uh, it all depends on who is going to do the consultancy and from where if they are coming here there are certain rules they are doing it from there they can do it online there are certain courses which will only give them the access to uh, the other service providers here in canada but they won't be able to give directly those services sitting in india and saying we provide these services i don't think anybody will employ them they will have to go through some um, you know uh, either an employer services uh, people who provide employer services here in canada either through them or through account or through some other organizations. Similarly, in other industries, it is there. So they can acquaint themselves through some online courses. Not every course, uh, every service you can do uh, courses online and provide the services. So they are, uh, in the, again, I would say sector specific. So when we discuss them uh, sector wise, probably we can comment yeah. more about break it into the people who want to do that specific sector from uh, India or uh, any other part of the world or for people who are coming here like that. We can have the discussion so that it's clear to those who want to do it from India, how they do it. And uh, it's clear for those who want to come here and, and do it. How do they do it and what courses they can complete before they come here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, my question to Mr. Vikas Malhotra ji. Uh, sir, if you talk about uh, the immigration services or consultancy in education or maybe in travel and tourism, is there any specific uh, like kind of an uh, thing that has been given by Canadian government to Indian consultants uh, to give them an affiliation that, yes, 
these are authentic and they are trustworthy and government affiliated is there something like that sure there is definitely and it's on canada.ca website as well mm -hmm. there are uh, from the um, really really good question uh, canada.ca website is going to follow that is a website which is your i would say gospel truth everything is listed on that so when 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 you go into specifics of the immigration into uh, Canada, there is there is a list of the, it's not a list of the courses, it is a list of requirements, which would further lead on to what you can do, what you can't do. There's even a list of the doctors that are authorized on behalf of the Canadian government who can actually do your medical tests also. There is a, it's a, so that is definitely listed out by them. Um, I There is no private consultancy services that the Canada.ca website would list because they would like to be neutral to everybody. They cannot be biased towards one specific company as such. But mm -hmm. the information that they give on that website really clearly defines what they need to do, where they need to go, what are the requirements, what are the qualifications, and on what basis and the grounds can they be accepted into the stream that they want to come into. They will not talk specifically about financial sectors or tourism side or travel or they they cannot be specific to one particular industry, but they will overall give you a synopsis of what is the dearth over here. As an example, Vijayji just said nurses. I can let you know there is a dearth of nurses and doctors over here. There are more welcome because the population over here is growing. Lots of immigrants from all over the world are entering over here. So the healthcare sector really requires professional immigrants from all over the world to come here. That one sector I know, teachers is another, you know, like example. So that website is going to list what are the categories that is being accepted, but not any specific to any company as such. Yes. And uh, so, sir, if there is no such affiliation to private uh, consultancy by the government, so on what basis uh, the consultants, those who are sitting in India and they are, they are saying that we are the best in um, giving you migration services to Canada or the study services, what are the basis of uh, their giving us assurance that? So, so <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm the best in the world and I know it. <laughs> which is he's best in the financial sectors and he knows it. It's a very, very, everybody says that I'm the best, but that is that it brings me back to my point. Number one, please do your own homework. Everybody will say I'm the best. Of course, I'm the best. Yes, you are the best in your own eyes. But think about it. If you are the government, I'm just asking you, Chitra, if you are the government and you've got 10 candidates in front of you, you mm -hmm. cannot be biased towards one saying, oh, yeah. he or she is the best. You can't. So yeah. it's, um, it's a, I mean, everybody claims it's a self-proclaimed the number okay. one. But you don't become number one with those. On what grounds? Yes, that brings me to another thing. You can be awarded number one by a reputed organization. Okay. We all know Nobel Prize as an example. We all know these kind of, uh, the existence in this world, you know, the Peace Prize or the President's Award, but you're awarded being number one by an authority that could make you number one. But somebody claiming I'm the best, of course, you think that you're the best, you may be the best, but that's why doing your own homework on online is very, very important. And why I'm saying online is because this is a new world. Everything mm -hmm. is available on your fingertips. You got to dedicate time. You 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 cannot be just superficial. Jana ji, bas main paunch na, bas othe. Hoor nahi, fir kuch hoor nahi. Dekhange ji. That attitude is wrong. Place yourself A plus five. Jana to hai. I want to reach there. What's after? Uh, what's after I land at the airport? Am I going to survive with one bag on my left hand and one bag on my right hand? What's my next step? Where am I placing myself? What is the path that I'm going to adopt? Mm -hmm. To get into that path, how do I get into the stream of life that I want to do? So the consultant is not, if the consultant is really number one, is not going to talk only about you landing at the airport, is also going to talk about living expenses, 
what uh-huh. do you plan to do how are you going to place yourself how will you approach for jobs you know there is more stuff beyond than to reach <clears throat> yes yes uh, so uh, sir your views on to that mr kutamati sir um regarding what <laughs> uh, regarding the same youth <laughs> when i have asked this question you have, you were about to say something on to regarding this. number 1 Yeah. yeah 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 you know i would say that um, i am the number one <laughs> in which country is what you have to understand yes, you know sir. if you are number one in india maybe you are number one in india and you please do give your services to people who are in india but uh, even if you are number one there you know if you, even if you know everything there there are certain rules and regulations that you have to follow and uh, um, if you want to give advice in those areas uh, relating to any other country not necessarily canada it can be australia uk or any uh, any country you um, may have the knowledge but then follow the regulations and if you have all the certifications and you are authorized to carry out those you have like um, you have got all those certificates which allow you to um, practice that in that specific country that you are talking about you go ahead and do it but then just don't uh, say like uh, i don't know punjabi so very well like because he has said but uh, don't say ki ha ho jayega ji or i know you know maine sab pata hai don't say that you know See. might you might be knowing it but uh, you know where you are allowed to do it or not is specific so that's what i was wanted to add to that yeah sorry one more thing i want yes. to bring back to vijay ji he rightly 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 said one thing and that is i may be num- number one in india but it doesn't really count i want to give you one live example which happened with me so i was in a city called windsor i was delivering a lecture in one of their universities and i met just because of the privacy regulations i cannot name that bollywood film actor i actually met his son Okay. and uh, i did not know he's amongst the audience i didn't i do not even recognize that person because he's a son he's not into film industry but his father is really one of the top actors so he's sitting there in the audience you know how after the lecture is done it was just about half, half an hour so you know people come to you and you know they exchange their views and also at that time and um, so he's there in a pool of four other boys and they are standing there and they are asking me some questions and then he said oh i'm my name is so and so uh, and i'm from india from mumbai and i'm so and so son mm-hmm. so for a second i was like is that a fake or is that real yes it was real because i searched him afterwards as well it was actually real so he's over there and then one of those four boys who's actually a canadian here he said oh sorry who who's your dad uh, and this oh he's into the film industry and his name is so and so and then one of the other guys said i don't care okay <laughs> it is there so think about this everybody plays very neutral everybody's equal over here everybody's yeah. treated equally and it is it doesn't mean that you could be one of the big bollywood actors son you could be sitting in an audience like anybody else do like you like me like like mm-hmm. them so mm-hmm. so so you could be number 1 in india you could be somebody's top not son you could be the richy rich but when you come canada specifically i will say you are tended to treat everybody equal right? right and and that's a beautiful feeling that the common person will have over here it's very very good to feel that oh i don't have to call him ma'am, ma'am. and firstly i said in my last week nobody calls ma'am and sir i call my ceo <laughs> even by his first name so That's- i mean like everybody is treated in a same platform and that is the reason there is a human value and again it draws down to uh, my my very very first point that when you come here you got to be prepared not just to enter at the airport and i'm here but you got to give yourself that much space that you are that you should be mentally prepared Mm-hmm. and uh, the culture adaptation is very very important that you will give respect to others and you will get as well i'm going a little offline than the topic but i wanted to hit on to the number one issue actually <laughs> which you spoke about 
Yes, sir. Uh, in this manner, you are also giving us consultancy about the <laughs> environment of Canada. Thank you, and thank yeah. you very much for that. And uh, really, uh, with today's webinar, we have got some valuable information and interesting information too about financial consultancy as well as uh, travel and tourism consultancy services. Now, uh, with uh, the perm with permission of both of you, may I request that uh, next week can we put uh, the topic as market research because as Sir told that we should pick one segment of consultancy each week separately. So can uh, for next week we take on market research services exports? So we sure. may have to take offline because I may be traveling next week for the next three or four weeks. So I will come back to you on that front about my sure. presence. Yeah, yeah. but um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, I will uh, support that. And yeah. um, even if because he's away, uh, I will try and uh, see how best I can cover that. Thank so you. So there's not yes, a problem. You enjoy your uh, vacation. We can talk uh, offline and see, uh, get your inputs also. So we will take up the market research uh, consultancy services uh, tomorrow, um, next week. That's That isn't an issue. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And it is really great to hear uh, from you. This is my second webinar where I have got the opportunity to host it. And uh, believe me that I have got some very valuable information every time whenever I listen to both of you. So thank you so much for coming onto our platform and giving us uh, such wonderful information and wishing you a very happy day, a good day to you forward and a very good week long. Thank well, you. Thank and you, you, have, you have a shovel. great time. Yeah, you have a great Thank you. time. Yeah. And same to you. And I have to shovel the snow soon after this too. So yeah. that's the same reality. I'm sitting in the office, a lot of work to do, you know. So <laughs> once we finish that, thank you very much. We had a good um, session today. And uh, thanks, yeah. you know, I know that uh, when we actually have you on the call, you always have very many good questions that you come up with. And uh, it is a very interactive session. So thanks for the interaction. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Hitra. That was great. Bye. Thank you, sir.